Doesn't that jam just hit you? Doesn't it hit you right, Paul? Mo, you played this song at the end of your live stream today. I was banging it in the car, in the Tesla, down the road. That is my jam. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to the big show. It's 1 p.m. Eastern on a Tuesday. We're doing great. The boys are home from Turks and Caicos. I am here in my flowery, floral, effeminate shirt, which I love and most of you love as well. I appreciate that. We are here to talk stocks, big government, uh, businesses, big government. inflation, all the things that <laughs> love you talking love talking about. We're going to do it today. We are taking donations, of course, to give to a charity. You uh, pay us the $50 donation fee to see a stock of your choice. And we, in turn, hand it to a local or non-local charity. Today's charity is the Akron Children's Museum, something that's very near and dear to my heart. Paul, you've donated to this charity in the past. It's a local Akron. We love strengthening Akron, Paul. You know that. That's why I moved back home. It's a local Akron charity where they build a museum uh, based around STEM, science. Kids can come in. They have summer camps. They can explore. They can learn. It's a wonderful, wonderful place. And a, a dear friend of ours, a mutual friend of ours, started this just in his mind. I think Akron needs this. And it's growing. They have hundreds of thousands of, of visitors per year. They're reopening. Really? Up. Absolutely. Wow. And they're reopening after COVID. And uh, they need our support. So if you pay a $50 donation, you'll see the ticker coming across the screen at some point here. Um, we'll be taking your stock requests if you'd like to see Paul's take and eight pillar analysis on some of the stocks. But first, we welcome you all in from all over the world, of course, our dear patrons. I know you're loving that stock analyzer, Paul. You delivered it early. God bless you. Your birthday was last week. We gave away the- My birthday was yesterday. We celebrated your birthday last <laughs> week. We got you the cake. We gave away the Tesla to Phil Sue. Uh, and um, we will have updates on that as well. But I welcome you all in. And Mo and Paul, you're back from Turks and Caicos. I need an update. I need an update on what's going on down in the Caribbean. Paul will give it. Please do. Um, so Turks and Caicos is an interesting area, uh, very touristy. We found a great house, a lot of potential, but uh oh, needs a lot of work. Um, it's amazing to me that people spend $2 million buying a home and they literally, we, we, we have houses in areas that people watching this show would not live in that we finished better than this house. Uh -oh. So luckily we're going to go in and do a lot of work to the house. We're going to yeah. buy all new furniture. We're going to change a lot of tile. We're going to expand the patio. We're going to put a bar there. We're going to change all the landscaping up front. This is going to be a true pocket of paradise here. Uh, Tricks and Caicos is very easy to get to, very popular. Great. It has a great, it has a, a great um, area for shopping, walking around. Mo, Mary, and I went and walked around, looked at the stores, walked to the stores, now walked I to saw, bars. I saw a photo, Mo, of you and Paul on a tandem bicycle. You had a picnic basket in the front. Yeah. I mean, what were you guys doing all this time? We rode down to the there? beach. Uh huh. We rode to the beach got and rode some, back. Uh, rode and to rode, the back. Rode, rode got back. Got and a then, Coke Zero on the beach. Yeah. We just, uh, it was a nonstop Coke <laughs> Zero tandem bicycle fest. Sounds sexy. Yeah. And then at one point, we went and saw the house. Okay. You know, it's funny. When I first saw the house, I was um, thinking about Mexico. And this is my goal is to make this house. Feel like Mexico. Can we, can the, I, add, the view is absolutely incredible. Yeah, can I talk about so the finishing Paul was talking about? Can I talk about my favorite part of the house? Please do the windowsill. So oh. there's a backsplash in the kitchen. It's it's great. I mean, well, it's being changed, but they took the backsplash and went on to the windowsill. I love that. Have you ever seen that before? Yeah, because you put little plants up there. That's what I love doing. But no, it's supposed to be a windowsill. No, no, no. Just put a windowsill with, with, with a drywall. They put this crappy. <laughs> backsplash on there and it was so poorly done i'm like i can't wait to get rid of all and this is a two million dollar home yeah. i like to grow my rosemary my basil in, in a window paul is that all you're growing there yes until, so can i tell the fun story about the trip yeah please do guys Almost i committed my us. first ever uh -oh. dine and dash but i will explain go ahead we were at the hotel we were literally at the hotel we got to the but to the um, restaurant on the water to have breakfast Service was awful at this hotel. What was the name of the hotel? Ocean... Ocean Club? Ocean Club, I think. And Grace Bay. Yeah, Ocean Club, Grace Bay. So we go to the patio. Service is terrible. Food's not coming. People are sitting down after us getting their food. And I'm a big tipper, guys. Big tipper. Like, to me, if you get 20% from me, you've screwed up. So I finally asked for the check because we have to go get our COVID test. 10 minutes later, no check. Uh -oh. Ask again. Can I have a check? Oh yeah, yeah, we'll bring right out. No check. 10 uh -oh. minutes later, no check. Uh -oh. Third time, I asked for a check. They go to get the check. Still five, six minutes goes by, nothing. I said uh -oh. to Mo and Mary, I said, guys, here's what we're gonna do. 
if they don't bring the check in three minutes, we're getting up and walking away because they clearly do not want our money. <laughs> three minutes passes, what did I do? Oh no. We got up, walked away. Now, in fairness, I went to the front desk and I said, guys, I'm Paul, I'm room 8103. I just bailed in a bill because I asked for it three times. You guys clearly hate making money, so I didn't do it. I didn't pay the bill. So if you end up having a check that ends up somebody saying somebody didn't pay the check, it's mine. Next day we go back. Service was awesome. Until it came time for the check. Again, the same fiasco. 10 minutes goes by, no check. 10 minutes goes by. Finally, a third time, the guy comes back. I go, I need a check. He's like, oh yeah, I'm like, no, no, come back here. He goes, what's up? I go, yesterday I was here, the exact same thing happened. You know what I did? I got up and I walked away. I didn't pay the bill. If you don't bring the check here in the next two minutes, I'm walking away. Bill brought to me. Thank you very much. Yep. Appreciate it. I couldn't believe it. They didn't want the money. We have our first stock donation, a $50 donation done by George. Thank you so much, George. He wants to see, Paul, you're going to love this, and Motu. W-G-O is the ticker symbol. W-G-O. This is Winnebago. This is Winnebago, baby. Now, Winnebago, if we go over, uh, Nate, if you show my screen, Winnebago is Winnebago Industries. Motorhomes, towables, customizable specialty vehicles, parts and services, headquarters in Minnesota, Winnebago. Very classic Americana sort of company. It's been around a long time. And, um, and I, have, we- I have heard that a lot of people, because since they're working from home now, Go on. They're just move. They're just moving into those things, and they just drive around the country and work from their Winnebago and have great Wi-Fi. And it's amazing to me that, that. When, when we pass these RV dealerships, I go, "How did this many people buy RVs?" That's what I want to know. I, I'm even more confused, Paul, because all I heard last year was there are no RVs there are yet. No RVs. Yet there are 17 dealerships around our house, we have and they're camping all filled. World and Sur- and, and have um, you seen Avalon RV Center? Yeah, over by your house. That's by your house. Hacked. It's packed with RVs. Packed. What's the story? I don't know. There's one down by in Canton. I just there's two by Canton. Tell Hundreds you what, of them. What oh, is, yeah. I don't understand. I don't but know anyway. how I sell so many RVs. Avalon I feel RV, low. great dealership. That's where, oh, I bought, that? that's where I bought mine back in the day, Avalon. Avalon. Oh, really? Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, we're going to get into it, folks. The ticker symbol is WGO. This is the show. If you're new to us, we welcome you. We're going to look at the financials behind Winnebago. Obviously, we've never looked at this company. We have no clue. Could the price be high? Could the price be low? Let's we actually look. have looked at this company. We did a video on it last year, I think. I don't think so. You remember that, Tim? <laughs> I think we did. You're just plain wrong. The point is, folks, is don't <laughs> look at at the ticker symbol. I know if you're new to this channel, number one, I love you. And number two, you might have been investing for me the past decade on just a ticker symbol. I would buy and hope it goes up. That's not a process. That's not a plan. That's what these other morons on YouTube are telling you to do. The process you're going to learn right now is taking our eight pillar analysis to look at the fundamentals. And Paul, I'm almost choking on my own spit. I'm so excited about Winnebago. Let's get after it. Go ahead. Okay. So Winnebago is a $2.2 billion company with a nine PE. Check mark. Profit margin, 7.2. That's an X. I'm actually surprised it's actually that high. I would have thought it was a little bit lower than that. So not bad. So one check, one X. Dividend yield, about 0.7%. Pays out $16 million a year. And they had free cash for last year of $230 million. So they have plenty of cash to pay their dividend and a high return on assets, 13%. So this might end up becoming a... Um, is this a... Um, no. Magic formula stock? Um, no, it isn't. At least okay. for five hundred. No, it's not. No, it's not. I did not buy this last week with my little book. Okay. So, and by the way, I did purchase this for my sister last week on uh, Magic Formula, and I don't remember that either. But anyways, keep going. One point three six to three point three. Check mark there. Check please. Okay. Um, consistent growth, profit growth. Pillar number four. Sixty million to two hundred forty million. But look at this jump. Last year, so big jump, guys. You see this big jump, Uncle Seth? Remember when I said that I thought I was yeah, surprised wow, the profit margin that. was so high? 5X. There you go. That's a little, uh, that's a lot. Mm-hmm. So fact that in there when looking at the numbers, basic shares outstanding, ooh, 31.59 to 33.35. That's an X. And look at 10 years ago, Uncle Seth, 29 million. So definitely up 20%, almost, no, about 15% in shares outstanding in the last 10 years. Oh boy, we don't like that. We don't, but it is what it is. Pillar number six is current assets over current liabilities, Paul. You know this. Uh, they have enough cash on hand to pay off all their debts completely, not just current assets. So it's a major check mark there. So it's a good thing, guys. They have more cash on hand, and their current assets are greater than their total liabilities, not just their current liabilities. Uh, we have some more donations rolling in, Paul. After this, we're going to look at YY, which is, uh, which is jo- jo- JoJoy. It's a social media platform. And someone else just gave $50. They want to look at uh, AAWW. I got you guys. Thank you so much. And um, great job. We're donating to Akron Children's Museum 
uh, this week. Keep going, Paul. Are we at free cash flow yet, Paul? Free cash flow, seventy-four million to two thirty. Check mark there with an average of one twenty-two. Yep. One twenty-two times twenty is two point four billion, Ooh. and that is a check mark. Check, the current market cap is two point two billion for Winnebago. George, nice find. Let's look deeper, Paul. Now I will say. Big jumps in the last two years in their free cash flow. That really drives up a lot. Their average, big time. Were you a fan of crisscross when you were a kid? Jump, jump, and uh, crisscross will make you jump, jump. Mo, Mo you're too Mac young for this. You I don't know what you're talking about. Oh my god, <laughs> that's our show today for everything money. Uh, Mo is, you don't know who crisscross is? No, I have no idea. Paul, do you remember you, when mate? kids actually yeah. wore their jeans backwards, backwards. at school? You're way more because crisscross would do this. I mean, keep, let's, go, let's keep going on Winnebago. Sorry about that, guys. I digress. Um. Okay. Now. Let's see here. Let's do revenue growth. This the revenue the growth has been pretty high. Analyzer tool. Now I imagine, let's look at it this way. What's revenue growth gonna be? Winnebago, I imagine a lot of senior citizens, older people, retired people will buy Winnebago's. Yes. We have a lot of the boomer generation retiring. The big bo- the um, baby boomers? The baby boomers, yes. They're retiring. So is it reasonable to assume that revenue will keep increasing by a sizable amount? I don't think 20% a year is going to happen. Let's call it four, six, and eight. Share change, they're adding a lot of shares, guys. Go do your research, because they had shares decrease last year. I wonder if there's a plan to do this. So let's sit there and say zero. Let's sit there and say one, zero, and negative one. Profit margin, I think you guys stick to five and a half. Free cash flow as a percentage of revenue, 4.5, 5.5, 6.5. PE, 12, 15, 18. Free cash flow, 12, 15, 18. From 2012 to 2016, Winnebago bought down shares, Paul. They bought back a nice number of shares. Then they started selling back off in 2017 to now. Interesting. So here's the good news. I run a stock analyzer tool. It's around the mid, it's, it's less than the midsection. So we have a, a range of 50, 45 to 153. It's currently 66. 66. So maybe this isn't bad. If you, if you, if you think these revenue growth numbers are accurate, this ain't, might not be a bad idea. You might be able to make 12 or 13% of your money at these prices. If you agree with all this, this is a good buy at this price. There are a lot of people, Paul, they don't even know what they're agreeing to. They just want to want you to tell them what you think. Um, I, I, I would never do that. I'm trying to teach a process here. But I will say that the last 10 years, they've averaged 22%. And I want to understand what that revenue growth is from. And I'm assuming 4 6 and 8% revenue growth. So I don't think this is um, a bad option at some point. So you have to understand, go do some research on what Winnebago's plan for the future is. I am assuming, yeah, I think this is, I don't actually think this is bad. And by the way, who's got a bigger brand in RVs in Winnebago? It's a classic name. You actually, it's like almost become the, are you buying a Winnebago, even though you're not buying the actual Winnebago brand? You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. Paul, if we look at the eight pillars, everything looks pretty good. Profit margin, which I would think is industry specific, as we've said before, and the shares outstanding are only two X's here. So we're not doing too bad. Let's head over to Mo, the Egyptian dreamboat with that bid ass nation. He's so handsome. He's got his, he's got his uh, army green on today. Like he's ready one. to- New keep, shirt. It looks phenomenal. Next level. That olive oil skin. Let's get after, are people trading WGO Winnebago? Let's look I, at this chart. I like it, um, and I'm showing you a zoomed out area because look at, you can just see how it's just kind of stuck in this range. Now these are all time highs, it peaked, so that's good. Um, but right now, it's it's just kind of finishing its downtrend, kind of moving up towards the sweet spot as we can see here. So this might be some kind of opportunity where you get a little bit of a run to $85 a share, and that's pretty that's pretty big. What do you think, Seth? I'm looking right at it here. Look at this. What is it? 66 say? Yeah, Mo. Look at this. Uh, We're coming through the sweet spot nicely. Down, down here in the bottom, a red crossing over the yellow, and this yeah. is our 32% stochastic. So when we pop into here, Mo, we check exactly. the volume, we check the bid and ask, exactly. and we start cooking. If you're interested in this, folks, you can join the bid and ask nation on the Patreon, and Mo will tell you precisely when to get in on Winnebago, which he does for our patrons, and when to get out. My so, guess um, is probably like seventy-one dollars. You'll start maybe taking a small position somewhere in that range, but this is this is looking pretty good. This is looking pretty good. This is a nice trend. Okay, yeah. Okay, that's our take on Winnebago, folks. What a nice choice by George. Thank you for the donation and for being awesome, Paul. You want to chime in with anything? Yeah. Um, there was a good question asked about by David. Remember. When it comes to share change and desired annual return, your low estimate should be the higher number. And the reason being, think about it this way. Do you want shares? If shares are going up, it drives the price down. If return is going up, it drives the price down. That is why that's your low estimate. 
right? On every single one of them, as the, as, the, as the rate goes up, your price is going up. So you want to think about it as what drives the price up or down. You want the metrics that drive this price down. Share change and desired return, the higher those two numbers, the lower the price is going. The lower the net two numbers here, the higher the price is going. It is, the more and more, it's in this video here, explains it. The more and more you do this, the more and more you'll understand that. But just think about it that way. If your end result on the low estimate is to get a lower price, you have to put the metrics in, in a way that makes them lower. So, if you increase your shares, the price goes down. If you increase your return, the price goes down. That's why the higher numbers are early on in your low section, in your low estimate. So, great question. And then I'll take some time, and I'll think out better ways to explain it in the future. All right, that is our take of Winnebago. Great job, guys. We have another donation from Trapper. Trapper always, I don't know, Mojin, what's that? Uh, Matt C., uh, he donated for Clover first. Yes, yeah, Oh, sorry, I missed it. Um, let's put him on the, let's put him on the, let's do that next, guys. Um, or no, we can do that. C-O-L-V. What is this? I'm this a little... is the, uh, this is the Kathy Wood hype stock. Oh, okay, okay. Good. With a so basically we're, we're terrible move pipeline. On, yes, we're going to move on to Clover. This is Clover Health Investments Corp. Now, this has been highly... Uh, sought after paul people have been asking about this for some reason we haven't really talked about it and i i'm looking at the <laughs> i'm looking at the financials now and i know why clover health and Cor investments corp is a healthcare technology company oh, yeah, that's right. the technology platform to collect structure and analyze health oh i see okay so this is going to change the game for medical records um it's a buy paul wouldn't you say we have not enough data it's still a buy though i mean everyone else is talking about it wouldn't you look at the spike it's going up yeah is that the show that we do, or is this different? Am I on a different show? Yeah. Let's look at Clover Health. Well, so Paul. remember, we, we can't. So guys, when you make requests, uh -oh. make sure you make requests with companies that have five years of data. This has no. I mean, look at this, Seth. Income statement. We got one year of income statement. Well, I think Paul. Let's do this. Is I think what people they're too used to other people just looking at this and saying it's going to go. It's amazing. But okay. why do you need five years of data as a value investor, Paul? Um, I like to see, I bet you don't need it. I can have three years of data. Our software needs five years of data uh -huh. to really give a good assessment. For in general, you just need to see a track record that you can sit there and attach to and then also see a plan for the future. I'm sure Cloverleaf has a plan for the future. The question to ask yourself is, do I want to pay 4.4 billion for a company that lost 130 million last year and brings in revenue of 366, okay? We don't have a profit, we don't have anything here. So let's do, I mean, let's let's just do the math here. Let's go to stock analyzer immediately. Well, I was being somewhat sarcastic, Paul, because Mo, Mo you go ahead. You got to look at the competition in that industry too. There's a lot of medical. Everybody's trying to reinvent medical records. I, I don't know why medical records are fine, but this is a specifically for Medicare and Medicaid, I believe. But yeah, I say that sarcastically I, I, because I mean, I agree. With th there sarcasm. are some channels that um, they don't look at any of this. I mean, Seth, look, this is th this company went public on. January 12th. So this is all the, even from a charting perspective, this is all we have. So when you look at a chart, you're wanting to look at, you look at a chart like it's an entire book. And this is basically, I don't know, three chapters, half a, half a book, mm -hmm. well, depending on how long the book you're reading. Is. So whoever, um, Nate, I don't know who gave this, but we can definitely take another stock if this one's not really going to handle the mojo we're trying to give it. Um, should we move on, Paul? Yeah, let's go. Um, I'll figure out who gave this. And uh, oh, I see who this is. Oh, Matt, Matt, Matt. If you want to give us another banger, uh, we'll get our oven mitts on and get after it. But for now, we're going to look at Trapper. Once the stock, Paul. The ticker symbol is YY. The company is Joy Inc. Uh, Joy is a social media platform. Yikes. Companies engage in creating and sharing entertainment content and activities. It enables users to interact with each other in real time. Online live media. That sounds dangerous for kids. And um, oh, look at this. Okay, live. Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay, lots of things I've never heard of. It's a presence in China, developed countries, Middle East, yada yada. Okay, this is Joe jo Joe Joy. Who knows what this is? Here we go, Paul. I love you. <laughs> How is the profit margin higher than the gross margin? Because they're amazing. What about to, do I have to answer everything? Oh, they must have had a um, a one time. How is that even possible? Do you see this? Yes. Oh, other income and expenses. There we go. That's why. Okay. Shall we get into it? Well, okay, but hang on a second. So look at this company right here. Okay, let's start. Market I'll show cap. you guys some interesting things. Okay, interesting. Let's go for it. $5 billion market cap. Nice. Four PE. 
Well, that's nice. It's a check. Check. Please. Profit margin, 43%. That's a check. Yep. Gross margin, 33%. Guys, it's not possible for profit margin to be higher than gross margin unless there's a one-time charge. So look at, I want you guys to look at what I did there. I'm not some genius. I sat there and understood business going, how can my bottom line profit be higher than my profit on every single individual unit, right? So if every single unit I sell for $100, I make 40 bucks on. If I sell 10 units, I'm gonna make $400. But my profit for the company is, and that's before my overhead, but my profit for the company is $500. That means I have negative overhead. Then I immediately said, well, they must have some other income. And that's what we have here. So let's go look at this, the income and expenses. So first off, look at their revenue, Seth. 1.16 to 2.83. It's a check, but they are down from last year. Mm. Why is that? It's a social media company. I thought social media companies are booming. Why is this one down in revenue? Profit, 287 million to 1.27. Check, but look at the last few years. 287, 450, 675, 110. Big jump last year. And this is their one-time income right here, $336 million. Look at the previous year, 110 million with 82 of it as one time special income. This is causing me to go, eh, what's going on here? Mm-hmm. I don't even know how they made $900 million on, on their revenue last year. That doesn't even make sense to me. Shares outstanding. Pillar number five. 57 million, 79 million. Oh my God. Big fat, where is this company located? Um, I have a feeling. I'm smiling for a reason. Yep. Um, let's see. This is weird. Um, overseas for sure. Yeah, but where overseas? Where? Anybody know out there? I've literally never heard of this company before. I'm already asking where is it located with a smile on my face. <laughs> is it China? I'm looking right now. That's what I'm thinking. It has a presence in China. What does that mean? Oh. Nope, they're Chinese. They're Chinese. Yep. Chinese. Okay, so again. This is where I go with the whole, I'm not understanding where these numbers are coming from as a business person, understanding financials. How is it possible for the gross margin even to be equal to the profit margin, which when you take out the one-time inc- other income, um, let's keep going. China. China. 5.5 billion in current assets, two, 3.78 in current and total liabilities, massive check mark there, cash flow. Why don't we even have cash flow? Hmm. Here we go. Okay. Average free cash cash flow is down over the last five years. Average free cash flow is probably around 425 million. So it's selling for, I mean, guys, if you believe these numbers, this is a buy all day. Yes. I don't believe these numbers. I'm looking at this. (laughs) I don't understand how this gross margin and profit margin are. So guys, let me give you an example again. If you have a company that does $100 in sales mm-hmm. and it costs them $60 to make that, that's $40 in gross profit, okay? Then you gotta pay your overhead costs, your, your salaries, your, all these other things. Let's say it's 30 bucks, you're left with $10. Profit margin is gonna be lower than gross margin all the time because you have this overhead charge. In this situation, Uh-oh. their profit margin is higher than their growth. So they're, they, have a ne- they have a negative overhead. I, I don't understand this. I just look at that saying, you might sit there and say, oh, opportunity, fine. I look at it going, I don't even wanna understand why. I mean, I don't get why that is. Like, let me go find a company that I really believe, plus the revenue's down. My personal opinion is just to avoid it. I, the numbers don't add up to me. Immediately right. icky inside going, why do the numbers, I mean, the numbers are blatantly not adding up to me. Mo, do you want to see people trading this over hey, here? This, I mean, if you want to do, if you want to trade Chinese companies, this is a great dog stock. It's been coming down for, uh, for a long time, came through the sweet spot, and now it's just coasting right on the bottom. This is the perfect definition of what a dog stock is. It comes down through the sweet spot and it just keeps going sideways on the long-term stochastic and the price just keeps declining. So this is a good one to put on a dog, dog stock watch list. This pattern, I'm saying, is a good one to put on a dog stock watch list or put a tracker share on and just let this thing go. Eventually, it'll turn up and that you'll be the first one into it while it enters the sweet spot. All right. That is our take on Joy or Joy, whatever it is. Um, it's a crazy company. 
Um, thanks for the donation. The Akron Children's Museum will certainly appreciate that. Matt, we'll get back to yours, VRA. Right now, we're going to look at Marco requested, Paul. Marco, a dear friend of ours, requested AAWW. Now, I need to know about this company, Paul. This is Atlas Air Worldwide Holdings. Atlas Air Worldwide Holdings. The ticker symbol is AAWW. It's a, together with its subsidiaries, is a leading global provider of outsourced aircraft and aviation operating services. Paul, they need my DGF spray is what they need. Yeah. The company owns a fleet of freight, freighters and passenger aircraft and, lease, and leases additional aircraft and engines to expand its portfolio. Um, it provides services to Africa, Asia, wow, worldwide. Okay. And the military, Paul. This is... Atlas Air Worldwide Holdings. Look at this thing. Okay. So, okay. $2 billion market cap, 4.6 PE, 12.4 profit margin. Yeah! Check mark. I like all that. Guys, this is what I love about our software. Seth, what can you tell me that stands out at you right here? Free cash flow is 640 mil. In the last 12 months. Um, the last five years, what is oh it? Oh my God, look at that, $14 million? So 15 million in the last five years is the average, and they made 643 last year. Wow. That means they lost a ton in the other four years. Oh no, I got the wrong sound effect, okay. All right, right. Um, yeah, So immediate wow. red flag to me going, why is that? Let's go look at the uh, revenue. Okay, revenue over the past five years is pillar 1. number 1.88, 3.43, check mark there. How That's good. Profit growth is pillar number. I don't know. I forgot. Go ahead. 40 to 426. Check mark there. Oh, okay. What are you laughing about? That's a lot, right? 40 to 400? Yeah. Okay. And then a couple of years in between that were kind of poopy. That's okay. okay. Shares, Shares outstanding. outstanding. X 25.16 to 28.49. So there's an X there. Current assets over current liabilities, Paul. You know this is pillar number six. 1.11 to 1.07. Check mark there. Okay. Yes. Free cash flow. Oh. Okie dokie, kids. Negative 131 to 746. Check mark there. With an average of 15. This company made $24 million in last year. Or, yeah, last year. $24 million. Paul, you bet that much on the Ohio lottery last year. I did. What is going on with this company? What do you? What do you? Oh, you're reporting a bug. Um. Yeah. Mo, should we? Let's head over to trade. Oh, wait a second. I'm sorry. It's not a bug. I, I changed the thing. Okay. Four quarters. Four again? quarters here. I apologize. My mistake. It's negative one seventy eight to six forty three. Oh yeah, that's what I have on my yeah. side as well. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. So, I mean, there's a lot of. A lot of this losses. This is weird. And look at the last 10 years, Seth. Negative, 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 negative. Seven out of the last 10 years, they had negative free cash flow. So I sense when you get this hesitation that you're probably just not too interested in this. Well, they've anymore. had no cash flow in the last 10 years. They've had negative, look, so minus seven, minus 1.15, minus 1.7, um, minus 1.5, minus 1.5, minus one, um, sorry. Minus 1.7, minus 2, minus 2.2, minus... They've lost a billion and a half dollars in the last 10 years in free cash flow. Like, what kind of business is that? It's the free cash... You know what I mean? It's like... Their capital expenditures are very large. Mm -hmm. Look at these capital expenditures. Like, this is a very highly capital-intensive business. Very highly capital-intensive. You know, Warren Buffett talks about he wants businesses that don't require a lot of capital to keep on going. This is an airline. This is an air freight business. They have a lot of capital request, requirements. So the question becomes, how do you make your money? I don't know. Hmm. You can go off earnings, but obviously earnings and free cash flow aren't adding up. So we had a billion and a half in a loss of free cash flow. But if you go to the earnings statement for the last 10 years, you don't have a billion and a half dollar loss. You have probably a a billion dollar gain. So how is it, how over long periods of time is it so different? Depreciation, probably a big depreciation number. Let's go to EBIT. EBITDA. Yeah, it's tough guys. This is, guys, this is a hard part about investing guys. I'm sure a lot of people out there go, Jesus Christ, Paul, another one. Yeah, this is, this is what investing is. It's understanding these numbers and saying, wait, this is not adding up. If you told me, Paul, this is a small company that's take off a couple zeros, you can buy this company in full, I'd say pass. Why? I, there's no free cash for the last 10 years. 
This company can't, and I don't see the path for it. Like it's a highly capital intensive business. How do we get around that? That's my question. Um, um, Mo, are people trading this? So it's getting down to, it's, it's getting into this over oversold area. Um, look how long it, it had a great run. It just along the, the stochastic moving up beautifully. And now it's getting to, these are their all time highs. So if I'm you, I'm just being patient with this thing. Eventually let this red line turn back up into the sweet spot and go for it. But you, you're, you have a lot of resistance, $76 a share. So that's all time highs. You really need to be careful with this one. I, it's, in my opinion, you already missed the big run. Go find something else. Do you want to address this, Paul? Yep. Nate, check out this screen. The Pentagon abruptly cancels $10 billion Jedi Cloud contract. Microsoft stock falls while Amazon hits records after a dramatic twist. Uh, the Defense Department on Tuesday abruptly canceled a 10-year, $10 billion cloud computing contract awarded to Microsoft. Um, Paul, what do you think about this? Microsoft. Uh, you know, it's it's big. Cloud computing is a very competitive field right now. This is going to continue to be competitive. Google, Microsoft, Amazon—they're all fighting for 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 the for the um, cloud computing stuff. Definitely hurts Microsoft, but it was a contract they didn't get. I mean, they're still growing like crazy. You know me—I hear about this and go, "Oh, great! The stock's going to fall." I love it. And the initial the initial reaction: this thing is down not even half a percent right now. Come on. Yeah. So. So they're making a big deal about a half percent. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get back after what we do best, boys. Matt, after coming off his clove disaster, he wants to see VG. I forgot. VG. <laughs> VRA. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> VRA. Uh, Vera Bradley. Oh, my. I didn't gosh. know they were public. No, wow, look at this. No. Oh, Vera Bradley, based in Fort Wayne, Indiana, I believe. Vera Bradley designs women's handbags. Now, Mo, you have a man purse from Vera, don't you? I thought I saw you on Turks and Caicos. Um, on, my, uh, on my picnic ride? Yes. You know what? My, my mom likes Vera Bradley. I've been saying, how long have I said that? I really wish I could just carry around a purse for all my belongings. Be so much better do than a fanny pack, bro. So what much better a fanny than pack. How much stuff do we have in our pockets? It just weighs us down. What about a, fa what about a front fanny? What about a little backpack? Yeah, I, I don't know. What about like, like Indiana Jones? Someone said Indiana Jones, you know, carried one. I Why love can't that, mow? That, that scene from The Hangover. Indiana Jones wears one. Yeah, so does Joy Behar. So what if, <laughs> what if Mo had a Vera a fanny pack in front, like like he's going to Cedar Point with he's got the band aids and the ointments in there? Fat Blemings has a great fanny pack that goes across the body. Do they? Um, What's it called? The body. So, spoiler alert to our patrons. You know Mo plows through at least thirty lipsticks of chapstick a I week. Do. I mean, I, like, I buy I buy a hundred of these at a time. He eats them. One Did you week. know that, Paul? I've used, I've used one chapstick twice in my life. Used. One, one a week. And applied it to my lips twice in my life. Uh, he's like Miss Piggy These over there putting supple. on. And I never lose them. Ever. Wow. I finish yeah. every one. Okay. Let's look at Vera Bradley. This is uh, designs women's handbags, travel items, yada, yada. Everyone knows this company, Paul. This is pretty interesting. Thank you, Matt, for the, ten, uh, for the $50 donation to Akron Children's Museum and this beautiful Everything Money software behind you. You can get this as a Patreon member if you're new to the channel. All the patrons are loving this, Paul. Let's look at Vera Bradley. The ticker symbol is V-R-A, baby. Let's go. $400 million market cap, 18.7 PE, check mark, profit margin, very low, 4.3. Very high gross margin, 57%. They make their own stuff, makes sense. Uh, no dividend, very low return on assets and low return on invested capital. So we want to pay a discount to it because of those low returns. How about revenue growth over the past five years on the income statement here, Paul? Okay, barely any revenue growth. 477 to 508. Okay. So we're actually doing, look at the last 10 years. Look 476 to 508. And this makes sense. It's funny, um, you know, my ex-girlfriend Lisa was very big into fashion. And she always say like Vera Bradley is kind of, seen its way through about four or five years ago. She's like, it's kind of losing its steam. Thing, its steam and, you know, I think they have to redefine themselves, et cetera. A lot of people still like it though. If you're following at home, when we have a slow growing company like this, we want to adjust our final pillar number eight, that, that evaluation, we multiply our multiple times to get our market cap. We want to slow that puppy down off of 20. I would imagine we get toward under that, of course, maybe toward 17. Let's look at the 17, 15. Let's look at the revenue. What are we doing, Paul? Profit, profit growth. Profit growth, 13.29, 21.87. Check mark bad. there. So bad. they've been profitable ever, I mean, for a long time, but it's, you'd think for a $500 million company, they'd make a lot more money, but that's okay. Shares outstanding. Shares outstanding. 36.24, 33.59. Check mark. Wow, that's nice. They're buying back. 
<laughs> current assets over current liabilities, Paul, is pillar 250 number six. 250 versus 70. Oh, more assets and liabilities. That's great. By 60 some million, $60 million. That's awesome. So if you have to take $60 million off their market cap, it takes their market cap to 340 million bucks. 340 million because they got money in the bank. All right. Uh, pillar number seven, the granddaddy of them all, free cash flow growth over the past five years, Paul. What is it? 40 to 31. That's an X, uh -oh. but with an average of 26. So 340. Let's go to the 400. Let's go to the 400 divided by 26. That equals uh, six, 16. No. Yes. Yeah, 15 point F something. 15 point three, Paul. Yeah. Okay, so that's a check mark there. Okay. Um, so my personal opinion is low return on assets, low return on invested capital, tough business, declining, has to turn themselves around. Um, is the, the stock price cheap yet, Paul? I, mean, uh, I don't think cheap? it's cheap enough. Even in the last 10, I don't think it's cheap enough for a company like this. I think with a company that has to rebrand themselves and turn themselves around, you need to be paying mid single digit free cash flow. That sound, might sound low, but these things, if they do work out, will sell for 15 times free cash flow. So how do you get a good, how do you get the return you need on that one? Pay a much lower price. It's currently selling for, you know, what is this? Literally 10, 12 times, 11 times net free cash flow, net current assets over, sorry, it's selling for 11 times free cash flow and taking the net of the market cap less the, uh, the net, net, net working capital. I just look at it saying, I think I want it cheaper, but let's go put it in Stock Analyzer after Mo does his uh, thing. Let's go from there. Most of the whys, um, what are people doing with Vera Bradley over there? So th this, was, uh, this was going back to, this was the COVID time. And look at that. It broke, it had no problem breaking through that 50% rule overhang area. So that's great. We don't really see many of those, um, but we have one. So let's zoom in. They have strength. They're, they're, they're right around all-time highs. They're making that little sweet spot reversal right now. So... If you can get, if you can let be patient with this and let it climb up, break over its all-time high, what are it, thirteen dollars and fifty cents? You might be able to have some room to run with this thing. Right now, I wouldn't touch it just because you have this resistance right here that is really going to hold you down. But if you can get some volume driving into this thing, I, see, I don't know what the daily volume on this is mm -hmm. because it is five hundred, say five hundred million dollar market cap. Yeah, four, okay. no, not even four, three, oh, okay. four hundred so, less the the networking capital. So depending on that, I mean. This is Vera Bradley, though. It's a company that everybody knows. It's not It's not like some off $500 million Chinese company or something like that. So maybe you can keep an eye on it. Yeah, Nate, if you look at the all-time, the, the max chart here, it looks like its heyday has since passed. It's been yeah. declining, Paul, ever since 2011 when it was up over $50. It's just uh, been... And by the way, in 2011, okay. when it was the big hype and the big thing and somebody said 50 bucks, it's going to be... 12, nine years, 10 years from now, what would people have said? No chance. They're crazy. And guess yeah. what? I put it in Stock Analyzer tool. I assumed revenue stays the same, 4%, all these assumptions. I'm getting a price of $4 to $18. Oh, boy. So I look at it saying it's probably, it's probably a decent deal in the high single digits where you have some upside potential, potentially. So if it gets down to 10 bucks, maybe sell some puts on it to buy it at lower prices. Um, the options are going to be terrible on this, though. Yeah, because there's not much um, yeah. volume. Yeah. Yeah. But listen, it's just, that's the thing about turnaround situations. Turnarounds are hard. That's why you got to pay very, very low prices for turnarounds. Like they get to rebrand themselves, change their look, change their marketing, and go from there. They have the very flowery look, right? Yeah. Yes. It's all like flowers and floral patterns yeah. and this and that. All right. That is our take, folks. Let's take a short breather. Make sure you are uh, tickling the thumbs up like, uh, like Paul's belly with the little, um, you like a Pillsbury dough, but you're not really Pillsbury though. I mean, you're, you're shredded now. Of late. I don't want shredded. Not like Mo shredded, but like you're mm -hmm. like kind of frothier than a chest nerd, I would think. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Michael is asking for, the ticker symbol is A-H-T. This is Ashford Hospitality Trust. A -H -T. It's a REIT. A-H-T is a REIT, Paul. Do you want to look at it? So remember the thing about REITs, guys, is... I assume he's asking because it's down 33% today. I like that. Well, yeah, their net income's... Oh, boy. Holy moly, look at that. Nate, look at the, look at the 10 year here. Look at this puppy. Jesus Bam. Christ. Hey, let me ask you a question. Do I care about this company anymore? What? 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 Oh, oh. What, what does it say? Three, it, what? Revenue of the last five years, 1.48 to 340 million. Oh. Hmm. Like, I immediately go, this is, not, I, this, is not, this is not what interests me. This is not my idea of that. My idea of value investing isn't to see a bad situation, how to turn it around. It's 
where do I find a good situation that's just misunderstood by the market? You know what I mean? This could be it, but it's a REIT. Um, their profit, they haven't had profit in the last 10 years, but one time. You see this, Seth? Paul. Cash flow. I'm here with Michael, though, is, you know, we, we talk about we rarely find stocks on this show as value investors that are cheap enough that we want to buy. And sure <laughs> enough, this one looks really cheap. It's down. It's So where was this balance? But like I said before, 80 90 percent of companies that are low are Those low are, for a reason. Yeah. They're not value plays. But, Where's the balance? Find the miss. Find where the numbers don't match up with the story. And how, at what point do I know with this stock that well, we're not? Like I look at this. Ready? Okay. Income statement. The stock is down a lot. Is there a reason? Yeah, 1.48 billion, 340 million in revenue. Revenue is down 80%. Okay, that's Profit. Bad. Profit, okay. Profit. They went from losing 62 million to losing 560 million. Does that make sense why the stock would be down a ton? Yes. Now, does that mean this isn't a value play? No, it doesn't mean that. But the question you have to ask, you have to ask yourself is, the things we're gonna do on the show, we're not gonna be able to do here. You have to go find out why is this gonna go back up? What's the reason it fell and why will it go back up? There might be a very logical reason why it fell, but we're not going to get that from the financial data. So if this stock is down a lot, you're excited by it, awesome. But you have to go do way more research. It's not going to be found in these financials. It's going to be more qualitative of nature. Find out, read the 10Ks, go to the companies and figure out why, they're, why their revenue is down so much and how they're going to turn that around. Right? I saw a great post today by our friend Jimmy on his Instagram account today where he said, he gave, a, he gave a span of unbiased to biased um, information. The least biased is the 10K and all these things. The yes. most biased is like CNBC. Mm -hmm. Go look at the 10K and figure out why this company is going to turn itself around. For me, I look at it going, for my, for my taste, there are turnaround experts. I'm not, not going to be a turnaround. In real estate, I'm a turnaround expert. This is a REIT. I get that. But it's not apartments. I'm an apartments turnaround expert. This full upscale and upper scale hotel properties in the U. Oh, this is hotels too. That's why. I thought it was hot. I'm, I'm an idiot. It's hotels. I said hospitality sounded like a hospital. Right? I'm, hospitality is hotels. I'm, I'm an idiot. Um, but even then though, guys, I look at it going like this. Even when they were making money, even when they were bringing revenue in that was higher, in the last nine years, they only made money one time. Let's go look at free cash flow. What, what are their shares outstanding? Oh boy. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Do you see this, guys? What are they doing? 9.5 million to 83 million Oof. shares. Okay. Jake says they are planning a reverse stock split. They probably need that, right? To get this thing sounding, yeah, they're just sounding better. Make it look like it's uh, something more than it is. So take out, last, they had free cash flow over the last nine years. That's good. So take out this year, this last year. And Seth, can you give me the average over here? So 222 and 170 is 390 and 180 is 570 and 190 is 760, 920 divided by five equals 19.4, right? 18.4. Um, yeah, that's right, 18.4. Sorry, 18.4. How'd you do that? Um, so 18.4 times the, so even if you had last year being a good, if you took out last year, it's still selling for 18.4 times the last five years free cash flow. Is that good? It's less than our 20 number, uh -huh. but you have to sit there and say, this is a, this is a big play on tourism. And I think tourism is going to come back and all that stuff. The question is just understanding why they obviously operate, not just the real estate, the actual operating Oh, okay. All of its hotels are located across the U.S. and operate under Marriott, Hilton, Hyatt, Crown Plaza, and Sheridan. Going okay. back, I'm, Michael, I'm fighting for you here. I'm going back is like, at what point do we decide that a stock isn't just beaten down? It just I, help, just, I already answered that question. I know, but just help me a bit. Like, So guys, if you look at the story, if you see the stock has fallen a lot and you see the financials and they've fallen a lot, does that make sense? Yes. Yes. What we're looking for is the stock has fallen a lot and the financials have not. I see. Because there you sit there and say, well, what's the reason for that? Oh, they're, they're, that's where it could be perception Bad issues. Bad press, perception, emotions. And by the way, this could be, now that, I know, now that I know it's hotels, this could be that situation where, okay, well, people overreacted to COVID. It could be back. But they're issuing, now the issuing of shares, reverse split, and the fact that they're still selling for 18 times the previous five years of free cash flows number, a little concerning. That's a little concerning. 
How's their debt looking? Have they increased their debt over the last five years? Oh, they actually paid down a little bit. Oh, good for them. Okay, that's good. So their idea is probably let's, let's issue shares to get ourselves out of this mess instead yeah. of issuing debt. A lot of them. Which too. is not a good idea when the stock is cheap. Yeah. So last year, by the way, when it comes to a REIT, don't look at the net income. Go look at free cash flow. Because the REIT, they get a lot of write offs for depreciation, things like that. Go to the cash flow. I always go to cash flow when it comes to REITs. Uh, cash is saying the best example of what I'm talking about is maybe the Viac Vi Vi Viacom fall. Is that correct? Yeah. Mo, what's he talking about? What happened to Viacom? I can't recall. Um, they were part of the Viacom discovery when the family office slash fund Arcagos, they had a $35 billion margin call and they couldn't pay it. And unfortunately, Viacom was a massive holding, so all the shareholders got crushed in that. Yeah, Paul, they are. There is a chance for your but, uh, your buttermilk thighs to come out here very soon, so we'll get to that. Uh, we are going to do next... Um, Thanks, thanks, Tim. BTG, Paul. Hey, Seth. BTG. Before you get going, you made the comment about um, how we're selective and there, we often don't say this is a buy, this and yes, that. Yes. And I said on the morning show this morning, or maybe it was in the chat earlier, I said, I can't wait until it gets to the point where we are saying, buy this, buy this, buy this. You, get, you guys are going to say, we don't have enough cash to buy all you of these You keep saying stocks. buy everything. Why are you doing That's that? What, will happen this is at what it's some turn point. To. It will become a point where I go, buy this one, buy this one. <laughs> I don't have like, enough money to do this. There's too many stocks to buy. Okay. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> you know, I never envisioned that. Yeah, that's all we I always get is these guys don't like anything. And then when it all comes crashing down, they'll be like, why would you idiots be buying this company? And then company? we're going to be in or, there going and saying, hey, let's buy Palantir. They're like, oh, you guys are stupid. That's what always happens, because I was told I was stupid in 2012 for wanting Microsoft and not buying it in 2000. I was stupid. I do want to address uh, Alibaba at some point, because the more I read, some people that we admire, Paul, still think Alibaba is cheap. Um, yes, Ben does. Yeah. And I said, I, said, I said Alibaba in our video, I said if Alibaba's you, you numbers are right, then this is a good buy. I think I had it worth like 650. I see some people who are still, they're not as worried as you are about the numbers. I, again, my goal, I live to the T, 10,000 companies out there, find the 20 or 30 that I like that fit my exact criteria. Mm -hmm. Listen, I'm a big fan of Intel, but are there reasons to not buy Intel? Absolutely there are reasons not to buy Intel. They just fits my, I, I look at it going, yeah, I get this one. Mm -hmm. This makes sense to me. Walgreens, I understood at 40 bucks. Yeah, this made sense to me. There was, these things like match up to me as to why people are we're missing it. Okay, I'm not gonna see every single one of them. My goal is, that's why I don't want you guys copycat, being a copycat here, because Gary and I disagree on things. Mm -hmm. But, we're, but we can all, it doesn't mean that just because I find 20 or 30 companies are the only 20 or 30 companies out there. Out of 10,000 companies, there's probably 1,000 or 2,000 that are good buys. Yeah. I'm just finding the 20 or 30 that fit that I can understand well in my own process. As you learn more from us, you will learn more about your own process. You'll say, you know, I don't like that process of Paul's. I don't like things in Gary's process. He, I, he's too conservative for me. You guys think I'm too conservative for you. Gary's too conservative for me. So it's all part about finding your process. Um. What was I going to say, Paul? You were talking about Gary Mishuris, one of you yep. or someone you look up to. Um, yep. We have our next company. Oh, I know what I was going to say, Paul. This is so silly. Um, if this intrigues you and this is your first time visiting the show, you can join our Patreon. You can click the link below, patreon.com slash everything money. Join our ever-growing number of patrons who get in this Discord community. And you get the software that Paul's been using the whole the whole show here behind you, you can get this instantaneously. And uh, as a member of our Patreon, as well as so many other perks including the community, our Tesla giveaways, our Patreon-only fireside chats, videos we do. And we just had a meeting at lunch about how many more exclusive videos we'll be giving to just the patrons. Patrons, if you stick with us, we have so much more planned for you this year, doing less videos for the public and more videos for you guys. The show is taking over our life, and hopefully we can fill your life with more of our knowledge. Um, and so that, that's the take. So, yeah, join the Patreon. Paul, the next... BCG. The next stock is B. T G. This is B to Gold Corp. B T G. Not to be confused with B to Y. Is a gold mining company with three operating mines and numerous exploration projects across <laughs> four countries, including Nicaragua, Nicaragua, Philippines, Na Namibia, Mali. Mali. <laughs> yeah, they're big in Africa, folks. We know that. Um, Burkina Faso. Burkina, <laughs> Burkina I spent a month there one night. Didn't you? Um, it generates, okay, here we go. Yeah, this cap. Is gold mining, let's get after it. Market cap, four and a half billion, PE 
Uh, profit margin 36.6 with a gross margin of 52. So we have two checks so far. Um, a nice little dividend of 3.3% at 147 million. And last year they did 632 million. So they had plenty of money to pay that dividend this year. High return on assets, almost 20%. Decent ROIC, 7.4. That's a five year return on invested capital, not just a one year. Check, please. Um, so, so far, two checks, Uncle Seth. How about revenue growth over the past five years, Paul? 685, 177. Check mark there. Where have, where have, where have, um, where have gold prices gone in the last five years? I don't know. Probably pretty close to in line. Okay. Net income, 25 million, 647 million. Check mark there. What, what was that? You heard me, 25 million to 647 million. Yep. Okay. Shares outstanding. We have an X here, guys. They are issuing more shares. Not by much, but they still are. About 3 or 4%. Ain't nobody got time for that. Okay. Issuing shares. How about current assets over current liabilities? Paul? They have plenty of money to pay out. They have 842 million in current assets, 289 in current liabilities, and 684 in all liabilities. So $200 million should be taken off their market cap. They're about a $4.2 billion company now. And let's look at the granddaddy of them all, free cash flow. Please do. Um, negative 92 to 630, check mark there. That's nice. With an average of 222 times 20 is 4.45. Check mark there. So it's a check. Check for, uh, oh wow, okay. I, I do believe, if you believe in gold, I prefer to invest in GDX and GDXJ, the gold, the, the, the gold miners, um, ETF. Now call me, I'm wrong. You buy this. Moe's got $100,000 in this gold. I read more and more other people have it in my cloning services, Paul. Not copycat. I prefer cloning. is a new book I'm reading. And so I just bought these golds. So I don't care. If you own it, if ETF, Paul it, the ETF. Yes, I just bought them. I don't care. What do you well, think? Well, like I said, if, I don't think that's bad. If, you're, if, you're, if you think gold is, has potential and has upside, then I think buying the gold, I don't, instead of buying individuals, then buy the gold mining ETF. It's easier than just going and buying the whole, having to do every individual company's analysis, especially when it really all depends on where it's going right now. Do now you know you're, I mean? you're fearful of people copying. Mo, what do you think about that? I mean, if my best friends have it, I read a lot of famous value investors have the gold, the GT, I'm just oh, like buying whom? it. What do you think? Um, well, you know, some people we're gonna have to discuss. I'm what reading this. copycatting? Um, just following our investments, just taking our investments and copying oh, it. Yeah. Well, I mean, do what you want to do. It's your money. But I, I mean, I trust I you with everything else in my life. I yeah. Mean, I mean, I personally think that you should understand it a little bit before you do it. I, 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 do, but, I do host a YouTube show. Haven't you seen it? <laughs> it's everything money. I know you love it. I, th I, I, I don't think money. you need to be an expert on it, but you should have a clue. You shouldn't just throw your money at something because these two yahoos on the internet said to do it. Well, that's what I did. Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> <laughs> um, are we trading BTO? What, what are we doing? BTG. <laughs> so here's, these are your highs. This is when the, when the gold is going crazy. Now, I'm going to preface it with this. I do not like trading gold. And the only reason I don't like doing that is because you get these daily spikes this, this way, that way, just because of anything that can happen. They say something happens with oil. They say something happens with interest rates, dollar, this and that. It moves on you quite quickly. So if you're doing this from a long-term perspective, I think it's more of a play like we're doing with the ETFs. But if you are wanting to do this right now and just seeing the trend of gold, where it's going, if you're interested in that, you are getting a, a little bit of a reversal down there. Let me zoom in for you. Where the uh, red line is about to cross over the yellow. Not yet, not even close to being a buy in the sweet spot, but eventually this red line will get into the sweet spot. You'll, but, and gold is gonna go for a nice run. I, I mean, I think, I think gold is a very good play over a three to five year period. It is historically the hedge against inflation. I think it's gonna be the hedge against inflation. And sadly for you, it's not Bitcoin. Can you elaborate on this? Ron is asking a very simplistic question. Is I don't understand why gold has value. Would you mind explaining? I think that's a great point, Paul. Besides, So the gold has other uses besides some sort of like, you know, it's not like Bitcoin. Where What's the use of Bitcoin? Right? We use yeah. gold in a lot of other things in this world, right. Right? right? We use it in jewelry. We use it in other things. And we originally started with the gold standard, which was every U.S. dollar had to be backed by gold. This stopped in the 70s? Yeah. Richard Nixon stopped Fort Knox, it. all this? Whatever it is. But it was stopped back then. So again, though, to somebody's point, well, isn't just our perceived value of gold? Well, yeah. But let's, let's say hypothetically, the economy went to zero. Would you suddenly stop liking gold necklaces? No, gold's back, baby. It's gold a, is back. Gold is back. It's back. Yeah. Right? And, and it's not to say that that means it's a good investment or not. It just means, as a comparison of Bitcoin, if Bitcoin's perceived value was zero, what else are you going to use Bitcoin for? I'll wait. 
There's nothing. So I mean, I look at it saying, okay, now has gold, it's, it, there's, you know, gold is, everything in this world is a perceived value. And I do understand that from the, from, from the very foundation of everything, everything is a perceived value, right? Why is this podium less than something else or more than another one? It's all perceived value that we build into it, but gold has uses besides just some sort of currency. Mm -hmm. That's a benefit to gold. Now, does that mean it's always going to be the case? No, not necessarily, but you know, relative to, if you're trying to store value in some, in some sort of commodity, I think that's the one, I think the, the hard commodities like gold, copper, silver, those things that are actually used for other things is the way to go, not Bitcoin. There, there was an, I also like, and it's, this is kind of contradicting myself because I don't do the international investments, but gold is not just a United States thing. There's, there's that article I read this morning on the show. There are three countries that came out. I think like Siberia is one of them. Three different countries have come out and they're buying gold. So gold is a very global thing. It's not just hedging on our dollar. That's, there's a lot more, it's way more spread out than that. So when I see these reactions to gold because of what's happening in the U.S. markets, I mean... It's, it's, we probably do have a big influence on it, but it's a lot more world out there than just the U.S. markets. You know, sometimes I'm sitting here, folks, uh, listening to these guys talk. I think of these one-liner jokes, Paul, and then they, they fade from my memory because I see more. Boy, I had a doozy. Now, I mean, it involves gold and your gold <laughs> teeth and, you know, I mean, making fun of you because you take it so well is really kind of. Even if I'm just making up stories, it's so oh, much fun. I prefer the ones where you're making up ridiculous stories. Because you just stories. like play right along about you and Mo on a tandem bike in Turks and Caicos with like board shorts. The sad part is I had to think to myself, did we do a tandem bike ride? <laughs> so can we talk about the driving there? Go on. Oh it's a God, miracle. Almost, it's a guys, miracle. everything money almost ended four times on the trip. It's a miracle that we're here today. So over there, you drive on the, it's, you drive like the British. It's on the opposite side of the road for us and the opposite side of the car. So we're driving, so we pull out. And, and by and we, he means I am. You're driving? And, yeah. <laughs> and we are going 50 miles per hour on the wrong side of the road. And there's a big truck coming at us. And I'm like, uh, Paul, wrong lane. And he's just like, oh, you guys swing it over. This happened multiple times. But the funny part is I'm looking at the truck going, why is that guy why on our side of the road? That's the thing. We're like, why is, why is the guy on the wrong side of the road? Oh, it was almost over. And then every single time I put the no. signal on, Windshield so the signal is on the left side. So I do like a signal and it's the wipers going on every like, you so know, then, probably. So then we get home, we jump in Paul's car. He's driving us home from the airport. <laughs> he hits the windshield wipers instead of the signal. I think of myself, was, like, this is backwards. terrible. Yeah, it was funny. All right. Um, Where's Paul's ex-girlfriend's girlfriend at? Wow, this is getting dirty. What? Me. Okay. Um, Who's my ex-girlfriend's girlfriend? Wow, remember that Lorestown skit? I mean, that is really funny. We're planning more. And of course, yeah. Um, so Paul, do you think, and Mo, this is a question for you too. If you guys die in a fiery private jet crash in the, in the um, Caribbean, can I carry on the show? Absolutely. You and, you and Nate. Nate and I and Tim? Yeah. But who would do the training and who would do oh, the insult? Oh, let do it. figure it out. I'm sure Stockmo will be available soon. Yeah. <laughs> who, would be, who would insult people? Paul? I mean, it, it has to be you. Oh, maybe she gets key man insurance. Like Poncho, Tim, we'll have to prop up his dead body like Weekend in Bernie's. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll have to get Paul stuffed. Then we just overlay old clips of him insulting people. Exactly. That'll be the show. <laughs> I would love to be taxed over me. That'd be awesome. Should we move on? <laughs> Let's get Mason. That's what Billy said. Okay. Um, this next person whom I love and I've already forgotten, it, it, they wanted Starwood Property Trust. Oh, Paul, okay. That's hotels that's also. Hotels also. S -T -W -D. Um, and Paul, you're very clean of these STWDs. They purchased. Um, <laughs> they purchased uh, these nuts. Big hotel a couple of years ago. It was a big acquisition. Okay, Starwood Property Trust is American real estate investment trust, principally engaged in originating, acquiring, and managing commercial mortgage. Oh, this is mortgage-backed security, not the hotels. And oh. commercial mortgage-backed okay. securities All right. in the UK. In um, isn't mortgage spelled kind of funny? All right, let's keep going, Paul. Let's look at Starwood Property. What is it? Caveat, this is mortgage-backed securities. You need to understand the mortgage-backed securities before investing in this company because it's going to look good when times are good. It's going to look really, really, really bad when times are bad, just like 07 and 08. 7.3 billion market cap, 14 PE, high profit margin, 68.7%, check mark. Big dividend, 7.4%. $550 million. Last year, they had $1.13 billion in free cash flow. Very low return on assets makes sense. Okay. Income statement. 686 to 742, check mark. 
net income 440 to 509 check mark shows outstanding 259 to 283 x balance sheet 79 billion in assets what because it's buying mortgage backed securities got it they buy so the thing is you sit there and go these mortgages are put on the balance sheet at their current value if all of a sudden mortgages are not desirable anymore or there's some sort of thing like 08 or 07, these things are gonna lose massive, massive value. This is exactly what the crash of 07 and 08 was about. It was about mortgage-backed securities that were just fugazi or whatever it was. It was just a bunch of nothing. You know I, what I mean? I People that. betting on betting on betting on betting. Read the, watch the big short, you'll learn a lot about it. Every other girl you meet is fugazi. Exactly. Free cash flow. 230 to 1.13 with an average of 400. Selling for 220 times free cash flow at the check mark there. I mean, look at it. This is, I mean, do what you want with it. I wouldn't buy this. I don't understand the mortgage backed securities within them. I'd want to wait for some sort of, this is commercial. 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 I'm looking at the mortgage roll right now and I see the fraud going on. I have no problem saying this on TV. We sold the property to somebody in 2018. Go on. I think he committed fraud in his refinance. I think he committed, I think he committed fraud. I have, I don't have any, unless I saw his books, I don't have his action, but the, the way things happen, I'm like, yep, this is the kind of stuff I worry about. You're going public with this right now? I mean, maybe I shouldn't. I didn't mean, I didn't name him personally. I didn't name the property personally, but. I'll do it for you. His name is, <laughs> no, I won't, I won't, Paul, I don't know. Go ahead. I, I just look at this going, mortgage-backed securities. They, they're only as good as the assets behind them. If he got called in that loan, he ain't selling that property for within, 60% of that, um, of that mortgage he has on there. Should we move on, Mo? Yeah, let's do it. I mean, if, if you want me to do this, I, it's hitting its all-time highs, which is not surprising. Uh -huh. um, and if you want to, man. Just don't do it, right? Just don't do it. Too many good opportunities. So many better options out there. Just don't do it. Man, he's looking shredded in that army green shirt <laughs> with that olive oil charm. Okay, the next one... Are we done, Paul? Yeah, I think so. It's 201. I think we have one, don't we? Oh, we still have one? We have a donation, Tim. We still have one more request, which is CSX. Oh, All right, CSX. last one. Oh, this is oil. Is it? Is it oil or trains? C oh, it's CVX. C S CSX, did you say? Is it the trucking company? CSX. Or train? CXS Corp. Yeah, railroad. Here we go. Railroad. CSS Corp. Don't play around on railroads, folks. Oh, look at this. So our good, our good friend, um, go our on. good friend Warren Buffett loves railroad because it's the most efficient way to transport goods across the country. And it takes quite the, it, it's very difficult. It's a very high moat, very high barrier to entry. How do you just start creating a railroad? It's very, very expensive to do. But those trailers, those, those locomotive trains can last forever. So $75 billion company, 27 and a half PE, 25.6% profit margin. So X in a check, dividend of 1.2 billion, 1.6%. Plenty of cash coming in and free cash flow to pay that. Good for them. And okay, pretty decent return on invested capital, 8.9% over the last five years. Um, did their stock just fall or did it split? Oh, wow. What the heck's going on? It was probably a, a split that we just did that our software hasn't picked up yet. Okay, hold on a second. Let me look at CSX stock split. What's going on out there? Whoever knows. Ah, CSX announced this is June 7th that the board approved a three to one stock split in the form of a stock dividend, whatever that means. The company provides rail-based freight transportation services. So a CSX now says three for one stock split that happened. So what does that mean again, Paul? Tell me again. So the stock split, I don't know what they did. I don't know what it means in terms of the um, stock dividend, but um, three for one stock split is they just triple the number of shares outstanding. This is not to be confused mm -hmm. with issuing more shares because now if you had one share, you're getting, you're getting now two more shares, you're gonna have three shares now. With, a, with issuing more shares, you, you keep the number of shares you had before, you just get diluted. Oh, Very big difference. Okay, so, so for example, in June, the stock was priced at $96. You, you, you cut that by two thirds and we're at $32. It seems like it makes sense, Paul. So, Correct. Okay, shall we keep going? Revenue. 11.32 mm -hmm. uh, to 10.54. Oh, going down. Well, oh but remember, God. COVID. A lot of shopping stopped. A lot of things happened. Okay. So this is, it makes sense that things were down. Profit, 1.7 to 2.7. Check mark there. Okay. Did you like trains when you were a kid, Ball? Well, I wasn't into trains, but I like them a lot now. I mean, kids love trains. You know, there's a train, yeah, yeah. there's a train track next to my house. Oh. 
currently? I love hearing it come in. It happens five or six times a day. You love it? Yeah, I really do enjoy it. Oh, that's nice of you. Okay, let's get after it. Happens what, at night too sometimes. What are we on? Are we on shares outstanding? Yep. Ooh, what oh. happened? Oh, yeah, this is a stock split. Oh, thank God. Wait, no. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. I bet you this is a stock split. Bottom line is uh, it is a check on, stock, on shares outstanding. I think there's a bug here. I see. So let's report the bug. Oh, because they tripled the stock count as opposed to splitting it. Yes. Okay. So Hold on a second. Let's do this. Quarterly. Double check it. Make sure you guys fondle the thumbs up if you're watching. Make sure. What you was the stock split? Three to one. When? June. Huh? June something. Hmm. June 29th, just recently. Yeah, so it didn't go back in time and do that. Okay, that's fine. That is a bug. How about current assets over current liabilities as I try and drive the show like 4. a train? 4.3 to 1.8. Oh, wow, that's nice. Yep. Cash flow. Let's go to the big mamma jamma. Cash flow over the past five years, Paul. You 916 know. to 2.77. That's pretty good. Check mark with an average of 2.28 times 20 equals $45 billion. The market cap, the current actual market cap is $74 billion. Paul. Yep, so that's an X. So too, too high. Uh, trains are going to go the way the economy goes. Mm -hmm. And they usually are a leading indicator of the economy as well. So if you, see, if you see trains start to pick up in terms of deliveries and goods as the economy is in a recession, it might mean coming out of the recession and vice versa. As trains start to slow down, because think about it, there's a long lead time from orders to getting the store, right? So during a booming time, if all of a sudden things start to fall, the orders start to fall, et cetera, but they still have inventory in the store that they're selling off, and you start to see order new orders start to slow down. Same thing with the reverse. With low inventory in stores, as sales start to pick up during coming out of a recession, the orders start to pick up more and more in a faster pace. So let's put this in stock analyzer tool after Mo does his um, his shtick. It's amazing that they're on back ordered for they can make a train and a Tesla in the same amount of time, Mo. That's the time frame of trying to get this stuff done. Go ahead, Mo. Are they trading CSX? So if you look at this, it's just it's just been consolidating since like November and the, and the breakout back in November, it was, it was really like nothing. So, um, but the nice thing is right now they're coming up, we're heading right towards that sweet spot. The, the question is when they break into the sweet spot and start moving up, will they be able to break out over this high of like $34, $33, whatever it is. That's going to be the question. Um, I think it's one that you keep on your watch list and you keep an eye on. I'm not expecting that it's going to be the best stock in the world, but this is definitely one to keep an eye on. What do you think, Seth? I'm looking at the volume just to double check. What yeah. do you think of that volume? Let's pull it up. It looks Let's see what moving averages there are, too. Okay, so it, the reason for it struggling to not be able to break through all of those, it's just been consolidating for so long, is look at this mess that it's in. These are just all of the moving averages that it's bouncing in between. Hmm. And the volume is... It's consistent. That's the, that's the good thing. Um, actually, it's pretty good. It's probably about average volume about 10 million shares traded per day. That's so a lot, yeah. This, it, that's, that's what it looks like. This is something good, but you got to get through those moving averages. If you're drawn to trading, you can join the Bid Nas with Mo, and he'll guide you through the whole process. We have an employee trader series for you, those of you out there who don't have time to keep up with this, um, which is myself. And so Mo can guide us along in the trades. And we're now going to show... As well as being a patron, you get the beautiful software and the stock analyzer tool. Paul, what should we be paying with CXX, which is usually a mystery with all these stocks? Tell me how I you should You know, the big thing was revenue growth. I, there's a lot of negative here. I went negative 2, 0, and 2%. Because it's probably going to grow with, the G, with GDP. And if we're expecting the next seven years to have a recession, things like that, I, I don't know what the growth will be. Share change, ignore this pass because this is all messed up because the bug. I put 0, negative 1, negative 2. Profit margin, 22, 25, 28. Bottom line is I got down to the bottom and it's overpriced. I have a price of between five and $24. Currently 32 bucks. And it makes sense though, because the PE, what was the PE? PE is 27. Yeah. So a slow growing company without any growth should probably be selling for pretty close to single digit PE, at least fall in half. The stock's at 32 and I thought, you know, much lower. So it adds up. It makes sense as to why that stock price comes in at low teens. Mid-teens. Does that make sense? That's our take? Yes. I think so, guys. Mo in the morning, every morning at 9 a.m. The big show every Tuesday. Patreon-only live stream this Thursday. I'm going on vacation. Hello. Hello. I will not be... What, what Nate? What you we have a donation for a question. Oh. Let's hit it. Hit it, Nate. Uh, hit it, Fergie. What are your thoughts on about doing a 50 little book search and narrowing it down to 30 oh. based on the 8 pillars search? 
Yeah. So uh, what, what, what someone's asking, great question. We talked about this at lunch. Is someone wanted to use the magic formula investing developed by Joel Greenblatt, which uh, Paul, I'm reading a new book that describes the whole process, how we got there. It's incredible. And they want to take, get their market cap of 50 little book stocks and then use our eight pillar to fine tune those 50 into a good 20 or 30. What are your thoughts on that? I know I'd be open to that. This. That'd be fun. Um, I'm, I haven't back tested that. Joel Greenblatt actually uses his magic formula as a starting point, like we use for the eight pillars, to then go and pick out the companies he likes more based on the different things he sees. But I'm open to that. That'd be fun. If you're interested in more about Little Book, a Little Book that beats the market, uh, last Thursday, last week was the big Seth week. I sold all the stocks of my losers last Monday. On Thursday, for our patrons only, I went exclusive live stream for about an hour and a half and bought 350 grand, Paul. It felt so good. Did it? In Little Book stocks. And um, filled with complete bangers that are too hot to handle, like Tupperware and 20 other ones I can't even remember. So that's how monumental they are. <laughs> Tupperware. <laughs> Tupperware. I mean, get your oven mitts ready. These are exploding to the moon. Massive, massive price increases to stock mode would say massive. And so that is a little book, and it's for our patrons. If you want to see it, you know, I love you out there. Paul, that should be uh, the, the show, wouldn't you think? I think so. But before we have civil unrest, We'd like to show those creamy milk, those buttermilk thighs, those gymnast legs. It is Paul. Now you've been doing your your, your lunges. Look at that. Look at that frame, <laughs> folks. He's just built like a look at him go. He's just built like an it's really an athlete, Paul. Those but look at those calves. They're just frothing at the mouth. And that's what the people want. They want this. <laughs> and you're gonna get it from everything money. Um join Mo in the morning at 9 a.m. Join our patron only live stream this Thursday at 2 p.m. We'll have a fireside chat this month. We'll update our portfolios. We'll update the little book stock. I'm um, so we'll update our eight pillar bangers and uh, all this for you. We love the patrons. We thank you for your support. And um, we have so many uh, ideas coming out this year for you. Uh, more um, tools in the in the uh, in the software for you guys. And I'm just mumbling at this point. More tools on the show. But we love you and uh, we, we appreciate your support. And, uh, and hopefully um, you guys are, are loving the software. We, we 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 think you are. So anyway, that's it, guys. I'm mumbling now. I'm just, uh, we're out of thoughts. I love you. We'll see you next live stream. Thanks for everything. Appreciate it.